obviously pre-planned, um, obviously very much pre-planned in the sense that Saddam, uh, we now know that Saddam did plan, obviously, even before 9-11. He had an extensive plan for going to guerrilla war in case we invaded, because that was always something we talked about doing. And so, in, in any case, um, we can't figure them out. We're not going to figure them out. Somebody said, we play chess and they play Go. And so, you know, somebody inside said to me, so we haven't done anything to increase the possibility of getting a handle on what's going on inside the country. All we can do is lose, which means all we can do is bomb, which means all that'll happen is the Kurds in Kurdistan, which has already gone in the Mosul with our support, the Kurds may end up taking Mosul and Kirkuk, the oil-rich areas that are controlled now by, um, uh, theoretically, by uh, uh, Sunnis, um, Arabs anyway. Um, they'll move in and maybe declare a separate government. If they do, Turkey might do something. Uh, civil war will certainly break out. And this is all what people want to avoid, but it's in the, the White House and its, and, its, and its actions are doing everything they can to keep it going. So we could see civil war, utter chaos. Europe would have to move directly. Would we do something in Syria? We might. Would we do something in Iran? We might. There's nothing to stop them. They'll do it if they think they can, if they want to. It's not if they think they can. Of course they think they can. And I know I'm painting a very gloomy picture. I'm saying there's no breaks. The only breaks would be reality. And since that's not a big feature for these guys, um, um, I don't quite know where we go. And I guess what I'm going to say on this wonderfully cheerful note is that we ought to have a lot of questions. I ain't going no place. Um, I'll tell you one terrible irony for me that really scared me. That they, we do get access. We had embedded reporters with the, uh, the Marines in uh, Fallujah. And there was a photograph in the New York Times of an Iraqi unit. You know, we're pushing the idea that the Iraqis have some self-sufficiency. And there was a photograph of an Iraqi unit waving guns and with us. And the unit was the 36th Battalion. It's a Kurdish unit. And I can tell you that throughout the rest of Iraq, Kurds are considered aliens. <laughs> the, 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 this is the Kurdish militia controlled by Barzai and, and the other, his colleague over there up north. And so, um, uh, uh, even what we see isn't what it is. And so, I don't know. Uh, we'll continue to chug along in the tradition of Ekbal, who always saw the good side of it. Um, uh, there is 3,000 miles of water between us and that mess. That is the good side. <laughs> uh, I, I, we can talk about terrorism. We can talk about Abu Ghraib and how it happened and the prison stuff. And I ought to say, I'm, I'll be glad to sign books for anybody over there if you care afterwards. Um, and um, uh, about the prison stuff, I haven't said anything except to say that uh, do not kid yourself. Uh, uh, Milai, my, Milai, you know, sort of a bookend of my life. When I was a kid, I did Milai and then to come to Abu Ghraib. Milai was bad and obvious and clear. Abu Ghraib, but the Vietnam War is disastrous as it was, 58,000 Americans. And what we usually say is two to three million Vietnamese. Folks, I will tell you there's a difference between two million and three million. But that gets into some issues of racism. I used to always say, to myself mostly, that the best thing about Bill Clinton was, as I thought as a president, that he was the first American president since World War II to bomb white people, you know, in Kosovo. So, you know, we're not going to get into a question of racism, whether we're a racist society or whether maybe we can go to war with Iraq and ragheads and shoot as the Marine did the other day because we devalue it. Um, but that's always a part of war and it's always a part of any culture. Um, unfortunately, uh, in this case, Vietnam, disastrous as it was, was, was always tactical in its consequences. In other words, five years after the war ends, after we're driven off, um, the Vietnamese are, uh, we're playing Monopoly with the Vietnamese, building hotels and doing, you know, doing trading, and they, they have the amazing capacity. Anybody ever read Embracing Defeat? This wonderful book written by a, a professor at Harvard about how the Japanese embraced defeat after insisting they would fight to the last man, turned around. Maybe that's something in the, in the culture of the Far East, but the, the Vietnamese were very quick to embrace victory, which is also very tricky in terms of us. And so they came to terms with us. In Vietnam, in, in Iraq, what we're fighting, and Abu Ghraib is very important in this, this is a strategic war.